HMP Belmarsh, where Julian Assange is now incarcerated inside, taken from the Ecuadorian embassy to prison, facing possible extradition to the United States and worst case scenario, death penalty. Okay, here I am once again with Kieran O'Reilly in a Enjoy. new location. Yeah, well, it's actually an old location. Okay. We're out here um, in February 2011 for Julian's um, extradition hearing, uh, European arrest warrant, merely signed by a Swedish police officer. Um, after he was, you know, no case to answer by the senior prosecutor of Stockholm. And uh, the world's media was here. It was like presidential proportions. And uh, so we kept vigil here for a couple of days during that. And at the end, we blocked uh, traffic and were literally lifted, but not arrested. So yeah, so I've just spent, uh, we've just spent 140 days, 24 hours a day, seven days a week outside the embassy. And uh, I had to go to Ireland for family reasons on Thursday. And four hours after I left, they, they moved against Julian. And uh, what impressed me so much, given that he's been sensory deprived and even the shock of the sun, you know, has, has been brought out, that he would refu he refused to walk for them, refused to cooperate with this process. Yeah, they and, had to carry him. So yeah. It took and they, eight of them. And they couldn't silence him. And, you know, that's all being spun as, uh, by the mainstream media as, uh, in a very negative way, but I think it's very courageous. Um, I know in our case, when we disabled a B-52 bomber in New York, uh, we interrupted sentencing and said, look, we can't go along with this. You're about to criminalise peacemaking and legitimise the murder of children by B-52s, by napalm, etc. And we refused to walk. They had to drag us into court. And um, so, yeah, he's very resilient. And uh, so this morning we uh, did a closing ceremony uh, around our vigil and we moved out here um, this afternoon and we're going to continue the vigil here in a kind of different setting from hyper wealthy uh, Knightsbridge and um, we've got a lot of traffic noise but being from Australia kind of trying to pretend it's the waves yeah. of the beach or something you know so Kieran just occurred to me do you think it was a coincidence that he was moved while you were away uh, well I was living in an alley with 17 security cameras and um, I don't know I mean it because I know you'd have caused a fuss. Yeah, to, I would probably be up. in there with him yeah. <laughs> rather than out here. So I would have blocked the vehicle. That was my intention, uh, which I tried to do on the first day that he was taken to horse ferry courts, but I wasn't quick enough off the mark. And, were, were there uh, any activists present? Did anyone make, make an attempt to uh, Kyle block the way? Kyle was there just minutes after, and of course, Rupley captured the footage, which was great because they um, less ability to lie about him. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, we've pr always been pretty thin on the ground. Um, it's interesting that most people who've shown support are from the periphery of empire. They're from Chile and Colombia and Ireland and uh, Eastern Europe. And uh, that's where Julian is popular, uh, according to his lawyer, Jen Parker. Very popular in the third world, as they used to call it. Yeah. I heard a lot of uh, South American Spanish music being played earlier on today. Yeah. And, uh, and the thing is, you know, the government that's lying about Julian Assange is the same government and media that lied about weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. And if you can't learn from that lesson and you don't bring a critical disposition to mainstream media, you know, what hope is there? I think it's just like, the cynicism is really a uh, cover for cowardice and laziness in this culture. You know. It's interesting you say that the fact that everything's caught on camera, it's very difficult for people to lie about it, but yeah. they can spin it. Oh, yeah. They can always... Uh, I mean, he... he there, like the judge, who's supposed to be objective, you know, who's supposed to be running on uh, innocent until proven guilty, yeah. calls him a narcissist in open court. So this was and in, a coward in, court, in open court. He that, faced one judge on the, on the day that he was arrested. Yeah. Just a judge, no, no jury. No, who's just being uh, remanded, I guess. Okay. And uh, I don't know if it's a magistrate or a judge, but this guy has no objectivity. You know, he's just parroting the government line. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting what the Nazi propagandist Goebbels said. He said, you don't accuse your enemy of just anything. 
you accuse them of exactly what you're going to do. You know, like the yeah. Jews want to take over Europe. Yeah. Well, and then maybe the Nazis had that on the agenda as well. And you accuse, you know, the, the Guardian, they're all Oxbridge boys. And they're saying he's an elitist, narcissist. Julian Assange rescued Edward Snowden. Julian Assange put his life's liberty, along with Sarah Harrison, uh, Snowden would be in chains today, you know. And it's not just a deprivation for Julian that he's lost his free speech. He's got a very good analysis. So when things happen, it's interesting to listen to him, you know, about the big picture. And what, it, realistically, what will happen now? W worst case scenario, best case scenario? Well, I was heartened by Jeremy Corbyn coming out and, and Diane Abbott. and yeah. uh, So that's one way out of here, maybe, if Corbyn wins an election or something. Um, I, you know, I'm a Catholic worker, I'm a Catholic anarchist pacifist, and I think if the Pope made an intervention on his visit to Ecuador, okay. well, obviously Ecuador is now history, but you need an anti-war movement that actually supports people they incite. So you had one and a half million people march in London, they incited um, Chelsea Manning to blow the whistle, they incited me to disable a war plan, and uh, they incited Julian Assange to publish... Um, publish uh, the truth about the yeah. war and yeah. um, so you need a, a culture of solidarity and increasingly we're becoming a very atomized culture. Absolutely. It's interesting you pick up uh, about um, Jeremy Corbyn, he did speak up uh, for Julian. Donald Trump before he was president said I love WikiLeaks and then when he was president he couldn't remember who Julian Assange was. So sometimes uh, people change their tune once they're in power. I hope that yeah, won't be the case. I don't, I mean, I, my perception of Donald Trump is that his uh, hands are not on the wheel, you know, that he delegates. And um, the good thing about Dom Donald Trump is that he um, uh, has, has introduced the term deep state yeah. and uh, fake news. And this is reality. The people with real power in our society do not, not do Donald not, um, do not, uh, I think your dinner's here, Kieran. Yeah, no, yeah. We're, I know. Yeah, I'm fine. We're, we're being interviewed. At the That's all right, yeah. man. No, okay. no, no problem. Okay. Uh, uh, we're being interviewed. We like, we like realism on this channel. Oh, do you? Can I have uh, some yeah. pizza then? <laughs> oh, you're very kind. But okay. I want to I let you have your, your dinner. You're okay. probably famished. It's fine, check um, <laughs> But, um, but we, we will check in with you here again. Uh, yeah, we're just a bit uh, further away now. Okay, the people with real power do not face, they don't look for a popular mandate. You know, and that's a deep state. Yeah. That's the corporations, that's Murdoch, those people. Okay? Bon okay. appetit. No worries. Keep up the great work. Gas on. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're ready. Thank you. <laughs>